Uh huh. Must you think I was joking? A Sumerian cuneiform tablet, which I, in truth, can't say I can decipher, but nonetheless we have it. And an orchid. And this is actually a native orchid that we collected. Uh, one of my students worked on embedding and uh, he and I both worked on and polishing. The plant, the flowers originally were a brilliant apricot orange, but they faded before we got them embedded. Uh, the block of plastic that we started with was about four times this size. Uh, we had some problems with cracking, and by the time we polished away everything that had cracked, we were down to this, but it's actually turned out as a very interesting it's beautiful uh, piece of work. What's in here are all things that I've done at one time or another. Uh, all of them, with one exception, uh, use various native plants that have been, in some cases, uh, dyed a little bit to make them a little more colorful. Oh. You mean there's a floor in here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I shouldn't have picked this up. <laughs> it's attacking me. <laughs> I have no idea what I've just done to her. Oh, oh yes. Uh, you might want to... We put together... Uh, when we started the work on the flower beds here between Austin Hall, which would be here, and the administration building, which is here. And this area is now approximately a third completed. So next year we will have a little bit more work to do. Huh? Oh, yes. One. The one showing our current president as the wimp bashing away at uh, Bob Dole with his purse. <laughs> this, mind you, being the same man who just got through waging a war on Iran, or I'm sorry, Iraq, and threatening to go back and finish the job. sort of a takeoff on the uh, Pentagon's policy of overpricing things. Uh, the kid getting an $800 Allen wrench for Christmas and the wife getting a $1,200 coffee maker that the rest of us could go down to Walmart and buy for about 15 I just decided to get the skeleton. Okay. Okay. What is that critter? Okay, we're now middle of third floor Austin Hall. Uh, some display cases and a couple of herbarium cases sitting out here. The skeleton over here that looks somewhat like a dog is not a dog. It's actually a coyote that one of my students did as an independent study project about 10 years ago. Uh, he literally started with a carcass of a coyote, deflushed it, uh, bleached all the bones, and then rearticulated them. It was uh, really a very involved process by the time he got finished. And he did a just a beautiful job putting this together. Maybe I can get somebody to do that for senior seminar and then leave it to me. <laughs> Over here we have a display case with uh, various kinds of fungi. And I notice we're having a problem in here. It's humidity is obviously a little a little too high, and our fungi are all molding. Fungi? Yes, yeah, so I... There's a certain amount of cannibalism there, isn't there? <laughs> Something of that nature. Well, certainly. Okay, the room we're in now is the Herbarium Museum, uh, where Ingrid is standing and focusing sort of at the moment are the uh, freshwater mussel and snail collections that Mike is working on. And Needless to say, you can't see that's what they are because all you see is file folders and the folders and the file cabinets. Can you, are they locked? I don't know. Okay, that's what they're talking about. Um, 
Some of the collections here are extremely rare. We've got material from uh, not only from Oklahoma but from a number of adjacent areas and we have quite a few things that are extremely rare. This is actually one of the most largest and most important freshwater mussel collections in this part of the country. Along the way. Okay. Research bailiwick. This is the herbarium proper. Uh, immediately in front of Ingrid right here, uh, we have probably the largest or second largest collection of lichens which isn't going to mean a whole lot probably to most of you, but little fungus plant combination types of critters, some of which are really hang, striking. Hang on, let me see if I can go ahead and focus on this and catch it. Okay, now I have a lichen on camera, whatever that is. Okay, these are actually rather important things because they are involved in soil formation. And this is uh, a major collection that has been donated by a former student, uh, John Harper, who is currently at uh, Oklahoma State University and is a lichen specialist. The other cabinets are regular herbarium cabinets. Now this particular one happens to be all orchid specimens and this is the largest collection of uh, native orchids for the state of Oklahoma. We also have representation in this collection from the entire Midwest and I do have some out-of-country species. In fact, I even have uh, orchid specimens from uh, such far away places as uh, Japan and Indonesia um, in our collection. The smell, is that a smell? The smell is mothballs. I know, I am a moth. I don't like the smell. <laughs> yeah. well, uh, we have in our collection now about. Okay. I say again what you were just saying. Okay. We have now in our collection about 20,000 specimens, and if you pin up on top of the cases over there, you'll mm -hmm. see a few thousand more that have not been processed, and the cabinets immediately behind Ingrid have a few thousand more in them. Uh, so we have a, a little bit of back work to do. Hey, what's, what's in those jars? Uh, the jars... Okay, these jars are various um, uh, apparently crustacean organisms uh, that are part of our collection. We have inherited a fairly important uh, collection of uh, freshwater crayfish from one of our vice presidents, Roland Reimer, and we are currently augmenting that collection. Okay. Um, what's the slides? Okay, all of the slides uh, laid out on the table here are part of a set of things that I'm doing for the American Orchid Society and for Soroga, uh, which need to be done rather quickly. Uh, these are a, a set of slides of native orchids that occur in the Midwestern region and will be part of a set of programs that will be done um, basically on conservation. It will be a tie-in between conservation practices and the orchids present. Right here, but, uh, this is a display of moths and butterflies that one of our former students, Janet Kirshner, put together. Uh, all of these are Oklahoma collected butterflies. Uh, this one right here, which is a blue hair tail, uh, was actually captured here on the campus at Chickasha. Messy room. Uh, this is the micro lab, which also doubles as the botany lab, the plant taxonomy lab, the mycology lab, and on occasion the genetics lab. Uh, the moment uh, doesn't look too great, uh, too bad actually really. Uh, we do have a experiment going over here. It's the very last one of the micro class uh, where we're in the process of making wine. As you can see these balloons are somewhat inflated indicating we're getting production of carbon dioxide uh, in our grape juice. So we're hoping next Monday or Tuesday we'll actually be able to extract some uh, 
Oh. And next Monday or Tuesday, you're going to have a party, right? Hopefully. <laughs> then again, we might have a very fancy grade of vinegar. You never mm -hmm. know. Uh, I have done this before, just I've just thrown some. So we have basically cactus and a crown of thorns that Mother gave me a number of years ago, and a few other odds and ends. Uh, back here, some maps that I have been laboring on now for going on two years, and so have several other people. Michael. <laughs> ah, this particular one happens to be a map of Coral Riser or Donna Riser which is one of the things I'm working on for the Florida North America project, uh, showing distributions uh, throughout the country. And on this particular map, it might be worth noting, we have three rather interesting uh, distributions, one in western Oklahoma, one in New Mexico, and one in South Dakota that are very disjunct from the main population over in the northeastern United States. Uh, one might add, each one of those dots represents uh, several hours worth of trying to identify a specimen and then transfer the label into a computer uh, database and then finally actually physically dotting the map. Uh -huh. No, but I'll throw some in. <laughs> As Mike's comment refers to my dropping a, not, not dropping, I'm knocking a whole box of test tubes on the floor a couple of days ago. Uh, right now would not be a good time to run around on the floor in here in bare feet. <laughs> One might find it a rather painful experience, or should we say a rather cutting experience? Mm -hmm. Awful pun. Uh, all the um, cabinetry in here, uh, we've installed ourselves. In fact, we painted, we went and got it, uh, we painted it, we installed it ourselves. Uh, same thing for the wooden cabinets. Those were all uh, built or broken down by us, moved and reassembled. The three classrooms where I teach most of my classes, uh, as you can see, we also have a few plants in here. Uh, actually, we're sort of in downtime on plants at the moment. Generally, we have almost a solid row of things, but these are plants that I use uh, primarily in the botany class, plus it sort of makes it feel a little bit more like a biology area. And the rather large Norfolk pine, should Jim Davis ever happen to see this, is the small Norfolk pine you gave me about 12 years ago. <laughs> it's still alive. It's certainly growing a wonderful crown there. Mm. Problem is, I'm glad I'm here. People keep showing this blind, but oh God, the tree needs light. It's going to help it a lot tonight. I was going to say it's going to help it a lot tonight, but I expect tomorrow morning it will. Yeah, well, tomorrow will make a little difference. <laughs> Other than that, this is the world. This is the front of Larry's house with assorted, assorted cats. The bigger one is Peter, left bereaved after his sister, the mother of the kittens, disappeared. Kitty, kitty, kitty.
on the front porch looking south, I hope. Well, you just stopped it just as I was getting oh. ready to catch you. Uh, that's just as well. The dripping one. Now, let me go get rid of this stuff. Only two cats following you? Well, I see Peter is happily integrated into the family. Finally. <laughs> I wish you could have caught this one little kitten this earlier today. It was just... It was just so busy chasing its tail. <laughs> Never caught it, but it was busy chasing it. One of those cases where being one of those Hindu, Hindu gods with multiple arms moves. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, eight arms would be adequate at the moment. Come on, Peter. We want to see your face, not your tail. <laughs> yeah. You're a pretty cat. You're a pretty cat. Yeah, I'm going to take a ball of pearls. Actually, with you and uh, whatever is next to you. Oh, that, that I. Which needs to be vacuumed. I don't think it will show up on the videotape. <laughs> one, one of my former students had her mother's sister make that for me. That is really gorgeous. I hope the colors will show up. What is the story behind the prayer rug? Oh. Oh. Well, it was given to me by one of my Iranian students a good many years ago. And let's see, the little thing hanging on the window shade. Uh, Which one? The small one. Okay. With red pepper in it. Uh, was a little Christmas uh, decoration that Mob Dews made. That, uh, we it was either Mod or Dana, I'm not really sure which, but one of them, maybe both of them, made for the Brady County Nature Club. Okay. Oh, the red ribbon with Santa Claus, uh, was a gift from Mary Jess a year ago. And all of the bells, wherever you see them in the house, and all of the other God's eyes, a number of which are well concealed, are things that Mother made. I suppose I ought to look, get this moved so one could see the menorah, right? Uh, at which point to where do we put this? Next to, there. Next to the baby koala bear. Let's see, the painting of Christ arisen, at least that's how I'm interpreting it. Is, well, Jeff Mitchell did. 
It's somewhere seems to be a cross between Conan and Christ. Yeah. <laughs> but it is in a traditional pose of the rising. I like the little bit of light right above it, the head. Yeah. Well, at least it doesn't make Christ look like some wimp. <laughs> Yeah, that he surely was not. Isn't that crazy that people think that the one who changed the history of the world was a wimp? <laughs> <laughs> it says a great deal about us. Okay, where are we at? Well, at the moment I'm looking at something that looks like a skin. Okay, yes, that's a uh, Persian painting on a uh, lamb skin. That was uh, one that Hamid Safarabadi gave me about... 15 years ago, and the small container next to it, the little purse lock structure, is uh -huh. one that uh, Hushang or Michelle gave to me. And you've got the Tibetan ghost trap again, up above it, right? And then down, let's see, the painting on the pie plate in the window oh. uh, was done by Abdul Nas, who is a Libyan student from, I uh, believe, Benghazi. Below that is a uh, print that Ingrid did, or drawing, for Christmas one year. And panning on to the east, we have a menorah that I painted a number of years ago. And next to that is an iron painting from Taiwan that uh, Helen Chu gave, gave me about 16 years ago. There are several Egyptian papyri along there. Uh, let's see, Vishnu. No, yes, that's Vishnu, isn't it? No, Shiva? Shiva. Shiva. I think that's Shiva dancing, yeah, I Shiva think. Shiva doing the universal dance. A pot that Sharp oh, Seuss made. The tall cylinder in which you can't see anything actually has two orchid specimens. A Cypripedium Canada, uh, Kentuckiensis and a Cypripedium portal form. Uh -huh. Okay, the uh, bust of uh, Tutankhamun was a gift from uh, Bonnie and Mark Gunn and Tisha Graham and Cena Buchanan. For some reason it won't fall. Yeah, I think it's going crazy with the light in back. In back and yeah. Let me try some. Okay, we are kind okay. of on the bust and the gods are behind it and the menorah okay. next to it. Okay, the menorah uh, is one I've had for a good many years. Okay, now, on the same shelf with the menorah behind it are two small vases that Vala uh, Satanapur gave me uh, about, I guess, about 17 years ago. And one of the few things I managed to salvage when the apartment burned. On the ledge just above it is a uh, little copper statue of a German Shepherd dog that my Aunt Dorothy gave me when I was six years old. And the crystal beside it uh, was a gift from Jeff Strother. Okay, uh, moving on over. Uh, copies of uh, the Bible, which my mother gave me, the Quran, which I got, a... Uh, Union prayer book, whose Hebrew I have yet to decipher. <laughs> On the wall above, immediately above it, is a piece of, uh, I believe, Arabic manuscript, 17th century, I think. I think that's the one I gave you. Yes, the it's Persian. Gave me. Persian, okay. Yeah. And above that is a Polish crucifix. Uh, the drawing, or lithograph, next to that. Uh, it was really one of my favorite things. It was done by um, uh, let's see, John. What, the, what is his name? The, the lithograph of the Aborigine and with the illusion of a city behind it and the piece of stained glass, which is of a native orchid, were both done by John Derby. Uh, the drawing above the uh, piece of stained glass is of Donald Perry or Donald Michaels known as Perry uh, it was done by Cleve Bell uh, the 
conglomeration of masks uh, and the bowl beside it, or below it, were both done by Char Seuss. Uh, the masks are my Auschwitz masks. Uh, the skull... Hang on, let's see if I can get those in the mouse. Okay. Okay, we'll put the skull to Okay, the skull is a gift from Mike Walworth and Lonnie Simpson, and the bowl next to it was done by Juan Granados. Uh, the pewter mug was a gift from uh, Kirk Sperland. Okay, I'm going. Okay, the skull is a gift from uh, Mike Walworth and Lonnie Simpson. Uh, the masks uh, were done by Char Seuss. Uh, the bowl by Juan Granados. Uh, the pewter mug was a birthday present uh, about uh, 16 years ago from Kirk Sperland. Uh, the little pewter bell in front of the pictures was a gift from Derwood Stevenson. Uh, the painting was one that I did a good many years ago. And Which painting? That painting, the painting, years ago that will probably not be completed until the point I die. Why? Uh, long story with that. Uh, the orchid plate was a trophy from an orchid show, and the Imari plate was a uh, gift from uh, Nobi and Hamid, and Garfield was a gift from Ingrid. Uh, the two pictures on the table so, <laughs> behind the eagle, uh, one is Ali Majdi, uh, wearing a t-shirt from the University of Kansas that I gave him. Uh, the other is a picture of Barbara and I that was taken at uh, the Masonic Temple in Guthrie. Okay. Oh, All the were some that Mother has done. This is what, July. She's been working on these, I guess, really all year. Uh, considering the fact that she's doing this more by feel than by sight, I think the workmanship is really quite excellent. And you should like the spider web one. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can get that. And the pictures are various and sundry people. That one time or another in my life have been important. A couple of which I was in home. And oh, some pictures that my niece left with me of my grandmother. And this was really the first picture I'd ever seen of my grandfather on my mother's side. And that are, let's see, uh, Jason, my uncle Jason and my uncle Claude. Well, actually, at one time, were teenage boys. It's hard to realize. <laughs> and this was my mother's father, and this was my mother's mother. Oh. It was taken uh, at the inaug inaugural ball uh, when Governor Bellman was uh, inaugurated. Was that 1980? Oh, that seems a long time ago. No, 1987. Lord, how time flies. <laughs> okay. Going to ignore the cluttered table because it is a sign of hard work and creativity. I have to convince myself of that, or my <laughs> own messes would be meaningless. Okay. Well, why don't we start on this wall and just work around. Uh, the Buddha is a Tibetan print uh, that I got quite a number of years ago. It's actually, a, uh, I think, a wood print that it did for me a number of years ago. It sort of brings a lot of memories of the farm where I grew up back. Uh, the needlepoint of uh, the Egyptian needlepoint is one I spent couple of years laboriously 
working and actually it wasn't that difficult except for the gold thread which is yeah. absolutely awful to work with. It's it magnificent. Gives beautiful results <laughs> if you can keep from losing your patience. Yeah. Down on the table. Oh. Down on the table uh, some pieces of crystal that mother has given me and a cobalt vase that I got a number of years ago and a little crystal swan that Ingrid gave me that had been her mother's and a porcelain fruit dish that uh, Bonnie and Tisha got for me. Uh, the certificate sort of hiding behind an orchid I ever had awarded, uh, which was a native uh, lady slipper, uh, Cyclopedium Kentuckiense Song of Ruth. Appropriate which, name. Which is now in cultivation uh, in Adele, Iowa. Is uh, another one that Charsus did, it's done in a uh, sort of a Mayan style actually. The painting of the birch trees and also the painting on the other wall of the young man about to stomp on something were both done by Wes Newton and the uh, painting of the young man is actually a self-portrait of Wes Newton. A bowl or condiment bowl from Persia a chalk mule, which would be a Central American uh, cult figure, uh, frequently associated with the Toltec Maya. A leather painting, scroll painting, which somehow miraculously survived the apartment fire. A piece of petrified wood and a copy of Ingrid's uh, Eros and the Womanliness of God. And picture is of uh, Walt Wilson and Ed Casado at the time they were initiated into Capital to Pie. Painting was one that my mother did uh, about 20 some odd years ago. It's uh, rather interesting and a Chinese print of some poppies. Uh, lower down on the table is a, another one Granados drawing, uh, that one of a native orchid, uh, Galliar spectabilis, and the other orchid of uh, a large wall hanging uh, is Persian, and the verses at the top and bottom are from uh, the ruby out of Omar Khayyam. A Sumerian cuneiform tablet which I, in truth, can't say I can decipher, but nonetheless we have it. And an orchid, and this is actually a native orchid that we collected. Uh, one of my students worked on embedding and uh, he and I both worked on in polishing. The plant, the flowers originally were a brilliant apricot orange, but they faded before we got them embedded. Uh, the block of plastic that we started with was about four times this size. Uh, we had some problems with cracking and by the time we polished away everything that had cracked we were down to this but it's actually turned out as very interesting.